Let's go. The dictatorship has now identified as a black man. Am I a black man? Yes, you are a black man. Yes, you are definitely a black man. According to an 1828 dictionary, you are the definition of a black man. That is you. So when you hear hybrid Europeans, when they when they pose questions like this, you start studying the seeds, which are the word definitions. Listen, every now identify as a black man. Am I a black man? Now, instead of him just being straight up and honest, instead of him just telling this dude, this hybrid European, he is a black man. Instead of him just saying that, he goes into a whole other different direction. Listen one more time. Every now identify as a black man. Am I a black man? Yes, you are a black man. And we're going to prove that right now. Jump in the time machine with me. 1828, Noah Webster Dictionary. American Dictionary of the English Language. This is what we on right now. Check this out. Now, you remember what he just said, right? He said, if he identifies as a black man, is he a black man? These ain't my opinions. These ain't how I feel. This is what it is. Share this beam out. Here's the word black. Now, you remember what he said? Hold on. Now, you remember what he said now? Now identify as a black man. Am I a black man? You remember what he said now? He said, if he identifies as a black man, is he a black man? Here's the word. Black. Black. Blake. Pale. Wan. Livid. Blakian. Blaken to become pale, to turn white, to become black, to blacken, black, pale. So when you hear these people say that they're white people, they're lying to your, they're lying to your face. Identify as a black man. Am I a black man? You set yourself clean up for that one to get knocked down. He said, when he identifies as a black man, is he a black man? Yes, you are a black man. All hybrid Europeans are black people. The definition of the word black is right here. 1828. Noah Webster Dictionary is right here. You ain't got to argue with me. You ain't got to argue with nobody who knows the definitions of words. It's in the dictionary. We speak this language. So it's time for us to start knowing the language that we talking like. So we know the meanings of these words. This is why I said we got to go all the way back to kindergarten. For real. Because we've been brainwashed by the John D. Rockefeller military school system since kindergarten. The word black is pale. That's what it means. Everything has been flipped, reversed, turned inside out. These people are the black people. You got to get this in your mind. It has to be in your mind. Everything that we've been taught since kindergarten has been to brainwash us. Everything, literally. So when you hear them say this. Now identify as a black man. Am I a black man? Yes, you are a black man. Now, you know, all of them are black people. Black is a status in law. It's a legal status. Knowing these definitions is the start to changing everything up on the planet. Everything. We've been taught that black refers to our people. Black actually, realistically, factually refers to these people. Being fucking bong. These are the black people. These people. He telling you the truth right here. He telling you the truth. Every now identify as a black man. Am I a black man? He just told you what he was. Hidden in plain sight. He just told you what they are. He just told y'all that he's black. But see, the brainwashing is from the John D. Rockefeller school system is to get us to call these people white people. That's not what white means. 
He's not the color white. He's black. And you might hear this for the first time if you're hearing this information for the first time. Like, what the hell is this dude talking about? I'm showing you out of an 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary. This is the English language, fam. This is the English language. 1828. Showing you in real time. These people are the pale people. They're the black people. You got to get that in your mind. It has to be inside your mind at all times. Because look, if that's not in your mind, they're going to finesse you. What does the Circle 7, divinely prepared by Noble Drew Ali, what does he say? What does he say right there? He says, according to all true and divine records of the human race, there is no Negro. Black or colored race attached to the human family because all the inhabitants of Africa were and are of the human race. Descendants of the ancient Canaanite nation from the holy lands of Canaan. Where do you think you at right now? Where do you, where do you think you at right now if you over here? If you over here in the Americas... You're in the lands of your ancient foremothers and forefathers. The only ones in these lands who are not from these lands, who are 3,000 miles away from their home, are these people right here. Get it inside your head. Dump the brainwashing. Dump the mind control. It's mind control. And they got people like our own people who should know but if they don't know, they need to get familiar. Fam, it's literally our own people who keep playing this fucking crayon game with these people. That's what's going on. So when you hear them tell you what it really is. Now identify as a black man. Am I a black man? Yeah, you are a black man. You are a black man because you're a pale man. Islam. Our forefathers are from the Americas. Their ancestors are not from the Americas. They're not Aboriginal or indigenous to the Americas. They're foreigners living in the Americas. They never got naturalized ever. So when you say in the circle seven, it say what your ancient forefathers were. You are today without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who is able to change man from the descendant nature of his forefathers unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator, Allah himself. What? What? And now you see why they don't want us studying Noble Drew Ali. Now you starting to put it together how they don't want us studying more science. They want us studying crayon games. They want us studying the race game. They want us studying everything else about the Republicans and the Democrats. They want us entertained. Just like this. Every, every dictatorship has one obsession. And that's it. So in ancient Rome, they gave the people bread and circuses. They kept the populace busy with entertainment. But other dictatorships use other, other strategies to control ideas, the knowledge. How do they do that? Lower education. They limit culture. Censor information. They censor any means of individual expression. And it's important to remember this, that this is a pattern that repeats itself throughout history. This is a Every pattern. Dictator. This is a pattern that repeats itself throughout history. Let me just show y'all something real interesting. Some some that's real interesting. Check this out. You got to remember who you are. If you don't remember who you are, if you don't study who you are, somebody else who does study who you are, 
they're going to lie to you if they got ulterior motives because they want your position. They want your political power. They want your political status. That's what's been going on. See, the sellout says on both sides. You see? So the hybrid Europeans, they got a civil war amongst themselves because you got hybrid Europeans who play the game of the black and white race game. And then you got other hybrid Europeans who actually know that they're hybrid Europeans. And they tell our people the truth, but our people are under the spell. Just like they people are under the spell. They really been brainwashed to think that they white people. <laughs> this is this is the insanity. And then you got our people who keep playing the black and white game, the race game, who know the truth that we really Moorish Americans. And then you got them on that side who playing a game with the color race game. And then you got our people who know the truth and will tell our people the truth and they think we tweaking. You see, it's a civil war going on right now amongst our own people and their people, hybrid Europeans. See, the war is on both sides. You got truth tellers on both sides and you got liars and traitors on both sides. They both playing the game. <laughs> this shit is wild. They're both playing the game at the same time. Look. Look at this. Hold up. So check this out, right? Let's go right here. Check this out. Check this out right here. Where you at? Mm. Throw this on. Let's throw this on real quick. What insurance companies are doing? Let's, let's throw this on real quick. Kick it off. So you got stuff like this going on. Look at this. John D. Rockefeller. What was he doing? 1905. John D. Rockefeller kickstarted the creation of the General Board of Education, the GEB. Rockefeller alone with 1905 dollars initially gifted one million dollars, then increased it to 10 million. In 1907, later, a further sum of 32 million and through subsequent decades granted some 7.5 billion. We talking about in the 19 1907. That's a lot of bread back then. With significant money by significant influence and loyalty. By 1950, the Rockefeller Foundation endowed Columbia Teachers College in New York City, formerly named the Russell Teachers College, produced one third of all presidents of teacher training institutions. One fifth of all American public school teachers and one quarter of all superintendents. Propagandists, they came out with terms like black, colored, Negro, Indians, Latinos, Illegal immigrants, etc. Hybrid Europeans could hide. Why did they do it? So hybrid Europeans could hide the true history of the original native people of one America. That's why they did it. That's why you ain't going to see no images like this just publicly just put out there. You're not going to see stuff like this. You got to go dig for stuff like this. You got to go look for it. It ain't going to be in a museum just right in front of our face over here in the Americas. Because they playing the game. You see? If, think about this. If you was however old you is right now, and you saw images like this since you was in kindergarten, you know what that would do with your psyche? How empowered you would be about how, you, how much pride you got with, with your people? All so-called Hispanics. All so-called Latinos. You know what this would do with your psyche? Hispanic, Latino, Indian, black and colored. Those are in illegal immigrants. We can never be none of those. Because we are aboriginal and indigenous to the Americas. See, that's why they don't want us studying stuff like this. They want us to keep talking about race and the Republican Democratic Party, distractions, the BET Awards and all this other BS. They want to keep us in that bubble. 
because it ain't no solutions in that bubble. You ain't going to find it's not made to have solutions in that bubble. That's why they're not in there. Look. Look at this. That's why ain't no solutions in that bubble, fam. None. Then you got something like this. Let's go a little further. You say. The euphemisms inserted for the conquering, murdering. Hybrid European were terms like new settlers, Western expansionists, Argonauts and prospectors, etc. See, they flipped the whole name of their own people to come over here with the help of the traders and the sellouts of our people who work with them, who use the name black, colored, Negro, Indian, Latino, Hispanic and illegal immigrants. They all playing the game. They dirty on both sides. So look, it say, as the hybrid Europeans came across the Atlantic to pillage and take the lands of the native brown skins, they renamed them Latinos. You got renamed and eliminated their many native tongues under the one language of Spanish. Yet original Americans of one America had no relationship with Spain or Rome whatsoever. So they talking about so-called Spain and Rome over here on this side of the world. See? This is a whole other thing right here. Look, then you got this. It says, when referring to Native American brown skins, the terms Moors, look at the spelling, Moors, M-O-O-R-S, Moors, M-U-U-R-S, Copperheads, so-called Indians, Indigenous Americans, Mexicans, Wichita's, Doug the Moundyus, the Mound people and Tartarians can be applied to one Americans. This is why when you go look at something like this, these pyramids, this is in Egypt, so-called Eastern Africa, right? This is a pyramid in Mesoamerica. This is, in, this is in Mexico. So just think about that. How can you have a one world design if we wasn't all connected as one people at one point in time, ancient times? See, I told you, the school system is military. They got PSYOP operations from the age of kindergarten to condition the young minds. All right. This is in. Look at this. You see this pyramid. So you got a pyramid with the Egyptians over here. All these is ancient pyramids. They still can't recreate these pyramids to this day. All over here. Right. And then in Mesoamerica, you got step pyramids over here. You got the pyramid of the moon. This is in Mexico. This is in Teotihuacan. So you got ancient one world designs that must have meant they was in communication with each other. You see, they had to have been in communication with each other to even think about this kind of technology. They had to be operating on a frequency exchanging blueprints. The energy had to be exchanged because look over here. How could you have these kind of designs if they were separated? We was operating on an entirely high, high frequency at this time than we are today. But it's coming back, though. Ah, it's coming back, though. See, it's coming back. See, once we start getting into this, can anybody, anybody out there answer me this, right? Anybody out there answer me this? It's a question. Anybody out there answer me this as far as this kind of preci precision cutting? You know what kind of tools they had to be using? This is not paper. This ain't no paper, paper, you know what I'm saying, confetti, fam. This is high technology that we was using at one point in time. Do you see this? This right here is over here in Hawaii. This right here. The Polynesian Islands over here. 
This is in Hawaii. Look at the heads. You see? This is in Hawaii right now. So answer me this. How could this kind of technology and the resemblance of the same Moorish people be all around the world if we wasn't all connected at one point in time? How? How? We was all connected. Don't forget, we operated on an entirely different frequency, energy and vibration than we do today. It's at its lowest today, but it's on the incline now because this age of information is outside everywhere now. This is in Peru. This is in Italy. You see what's going on? This is in Turkey. This is in Egypt on the other side. This is in Hawaii. You see how you see how tall this thing is? This is a giant. You see this? Look at the architecture. This is what they don't want us to pay attention to. Look at the waterways. These are deep ground cathedrals. And how you got waterworks that's deep inside the planet. And look the precise technology slicing through this rock. This is not this is not this is not something that they can even recreate to this day. They just build on top of stuff. Talk aka the mud flood. They build on top of that. Oh God, more Easter Island. That's in Hawaii. This right here. Then you go over here and you say, well, that was over there, right? So what did they have over here? Bing bong. Stuff like this. Okay. So what so basically what you're saying is you had an African presence. In ancient America, because the word Africa means the world. The word Africa is actually a modern word and it's a Latin word for the word Amexum, which means the planet, the terrain of the world. Amexum. That's why we over here in North America and South America, Central America, we are in Northwest and Southwest Amexum. That's where we at right now. Hold up. Turn me up, man. Let's go. Let's go. So when you see something like this, right? Hold up. Hold up. So when you hear something like this, right? Check this out. I want to show y'all how we connected. Look at this. <laughs> I'm going to show y'all how we connected, right? Look. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I want to show y'all how we connected. Look, I want to show y'all how we connected, boys. Look, let me just show y'all how we really is super connected and we think that we not connected. Look, watch this. Watch this right here. Show y'all how we super connected, fam. I'm talking about super connected. Look, all right. You see these faces? Look. See these faces, right? Look at the faces. Look at the modern and the ancient faces. You see them? Look at the Egyptians on so-called pyramid. All of the pyramids. Modern people. Moorish people. Look at, look at the ancient statues. Right? And look at modern Moors. See, we are ancient and modern people in real time. You see? Ancient and modern people all around the planet. See, once you start slowing it down and you dump the, the military operation of the school system and these traders that's out here, you can start seeing things and you start connecting dots. Why do you think they shot the noses off? Why? Why would they shoot the noses off something that's ancient and so beautiful? Why would they shoot the noses off to, to get us to not look at it and have value for it? We'll look at it and say, man, that's 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 wild. That's cold how they built that, but where the nose at? Because if you put that Moorish nose back on that ancient carving, that ancient statue, that ancient landmark, that ancient monument, you're gonna see yourself. Why would somebody who want to take our position show us our real face? 
That's why they shot the noses off to cause chaos and confusion. And here they come with a story, his story, and made up something and inserted themselves like they do. And then the, sell the sellouts and the traders, they go along with the story. These right here is found. Do you know these basalt heads are found all around the world? And the most of them are found in the Americas. In the Americas, North, Central, and South America. All of these heads right here, majority of them are 5 to 10 to 15 tons. This ain't something slight. This ain't, this ain't something slight right here. This heavyweight shit. You can't just walk over there, find one, pick one of them up, and then put it on a boat and then move it somewhere else. This shit weighs 5, 10 to 15 tons. Tons? <laughs> tons. So this shit ain't slight. Look. This is why we said, this is, why, this, is why, this is why we said, if you're looking at Montezuma and you're looking at the pyramids and whatnot around the world, then you'll see the connection. Look, watch this. Watch this right here. Look. Watch this right here, Morris. Hold up. Ancient, ancient and modern, right? Ancient and modern. They still use the cap and gown to this day when you graduate. They still wearing the cap and gown. Where do you think the origin of the cap and gown is from? The origin of the cap and gown is right here. Bing bong. This is the origin of the cap and gown. You seeing it right here, ancient and modern. They just changed the design of what you of the ancient and modern national headdress. That's all they did. They flattened it out. Fam, fam, listen. This this finna blow your mind. All right, look. This this finna blow your mind. Hold up. <laughs> Yo, this finna blow your mind. Now nah, we just show, you know how, nah, you know how we just show, you know how we just showed the pyramids, right? This finna blow your mind. You have ancient and modern headdresses right here, okay? Now you have a pyramid right here because that phenol right there, that's that tip, that's a pyramid that connects to the 360 degrees, the tassel. Swinging all around the world. Okay. Then you have a flat mortar board with the top and the tassel swinging 360 degrees all around the world. And this is a representation of the womb of the Moorish woman. Keep that in mind. Okay. So this is our umbilical cord that connects us to the Moorish woman. So when we are in the womb, we are being created. And the umbilical cord is the link to the great cosmic mother, our mothers, right? So when you say, well, what does this mean as far as as above, so below? As within, so without, okay? Because everything has a polarity. So when you say, how is this a polarity that we can prove right now? You ready? Bing fucking bong. You're seeing this right here in architectural form on the planet that we live on. You have the tips of the pyramids scattered all around the world. That's this. And then you have the mortar board representation with the flat pyramids. Mesoamerica. Ah. Uh, <laughs> let's go Let's go Let's go Let's go Let's go man Let's go Right here in front of us You got the connection You got the connection Right here It's in the architecture It's in the headdress 
ancient and modern. It's right here. You see that? So the real cream is when you start finding out about your Moorish history, your Moorish heritage, you start finding about your heritability, you start finding about the science of the planet, you're going to start looking at everything. You're going to start looking at landmarks. You're going to start looking at drip. You're going to start looking at headdresses. You're going to start looking at the, the tunnels in the, in, the, in the train station. You're going to start looking at everything entirely different. Like this right here, right? Look at this. You see this? Hold up. You see this? Look. Let me show you something. You see this right here, right? That's set. Okay. Now, remember how we said we got to take our minds all the way back. Let's do it in real time. We got to take our minds all the way back to the kindergarten. Kindergarten is the garden of children. Okay. Is the first class of elementary school because it teaches children how to use words. Seeds. What are the seed? The word was the spiritual seed, the source of life. To find evidence that words are seeds, we need to turn our attention to the Bible. Verse Luke chapter 8 verse 11. Now the nucleus is a what? It's a now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. A seed, a word, is the nucleus of a thing and therefore is the beginning or source of that thing. This is why John D. Rockefeller wants to institutionalize us and brainwash us out of our Moorish history at a young age. Daycare. They even going before kindergarten. They pushing parents to put their children in daycare. Those are other military institutions. Why? Because you want to, they want to corrupt our children's minds at younger and younger ages. You get it? So the younger they could get our children to be in there thinking like, nah, y'all, y'all wasn't really on nothing. Y'all got brought over here in slave boats. Even though we can't show y'all the slave boat, they want to plant that seed into the mind of children. Because children are going to use their imagination or lack thereof. That's why we got to each one teach one. We have to teach our children who they are. We have to. If we don't teach our children who they are and we lead them up in these schools, it's over with. It's over with. You got to go back. You got to go back and teach the children. Because what do children do? <clears throat> children have a vivid imagination. That's why pictures speak a thousand words, especially with children. Music and pictures get children to learn faster because they're using sound, they're using sight, they're using imagination to connect the education or the erudition. Feel me? That's why we got to take it back to kindergarten. We got to take it back to this right here. You say, how can you get this library? You can start. You can start at KhalifaMedia.com. Go there. KhalifaMedia.com. Somebody, can y'all put the link up? KhalifaMedia.com. Put the link up. Go to that website. You can go to that website or you could go to RVBayPublications.com. You could go to them too. Fire. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do you one. I'm gonna do you one better than that, more. I'm gonna show you right now what it is. Go to KhalifaMedia.com right there. Gratitude, gratitude. KhalifaMedia.com. Go there. Fire. I'm talking about straight ether. So look, you see how they say. There's nothing new under the sun, right? Ain't nothing new under the sun. We know this. It's nothing new under the sun. So how could some, how could something, look, how could this drip right here be a representation of something ancient and modern? Also, it's a representation of a pyramid or pyramids on the planet 
both pyramid with the triangle shape, triangular, and flat top pyramids called step pyramids, which is in synchronicity with this and this. Ah, more's for the wind. More's for the wind. Huh? More's for the wind. Yeah. 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 Nah, you want to go a little further? Okay. Okay. A little further, right? Remember him right here? Remember Set? Remember Set? Did you know that Set, this dog right here? Hold up. Where you at? Did you know that this, that this, that this, that that dog right there? That dog right there. Hold up. Uh, let's go right there. This dog right here. You know that this dog. Let me zoom in. That dog right there. Set. You know that that dog is only indigenous to the Americas, huh? Oh, you need to, you need you need you need some big pictures, huh? Okay. You need you need some pictures. Hold up. Yeah. I got you. 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 Yeah. I got you. I got you, more. I got you, Morris. So, again, that's set. And this book is called the Egyptian Book of the Dead. The Egyptian Book of the Dead got representations on there. Like this, like this falcon right there. You see that falcon? Huh? See that falcon? See that right there? So look, back on set real quick. Well, that's what you say is Anubis from the Americas. So Anubis is actually from the Americas? What? Yes. The ancient Egyptian god Anubis, Anubis is from the Americas. Huh? He's from the Americas? There's the black and white. There's the color version. Now keep in mind, this is in real time right now. We ain't got time to play no games. So as you see the staff right there, it say what? Clearly, you see that Anubis is patterned after Zolo, which is a native dog to the Americas. So this dog right here is indigenous to the Americas. Come on, man. Come on. More's for the win, man. <laughs> Yo! More's for the win. What you mean? So you got this synced up. Then you got this synced up with this. Then you got these pyramids, step pyramids in Mesoamerica. You got them synced up to this one right here. Cook them. Cook them. Cook them. Cook them. And then you got this. Anubis. You got Anubis linked up with the Zolo dog that's only native to the Americas? Come on, man. Come on. It, 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 what, what, what would you say? Hold on, man. We on that, we on, we on that mob tonight. We on, we, on that, we on that mob tonight. We on that infamous. Shout out to Mob D. We on that tonight. We on that. Actually, you want to go a little farther? Hold up. Hold up. You said you wanted to go a little further, right? Ah, okay. So, you see this? Remember how we were talking about, shout out to Tampa, Islam. You see, so we were talking about this right here, right? Right? We were talking about that, and then, then, we, then we were talking about this. Right? I look like a bird, don't it? Hmm. Yeah. Let's find out about the bird real fast. 
What the birds say? From the same book. America is the true old world, volume two. Yeah. What it say? It say the ancient Egyptian god Horus is from the Americas because you can clearly see that Horus is patterned after Aplamado, the Aplamado falcon, which is native to the Americas. Ah, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me this falcon is also native to the Americas too. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Morris. Come on, you ain't seeing it now. You ain't, you ain't seeing it yet. You ain't seeing that the Americas is the true old world. You ain't seeing that this falcon right here is Nate is indigenous to the Americas. It's over here. Fam, everything we've been taught since kindergarten been some BS. Everything from these institutions. This right here, this bird is called an Aplomato Falcon. That's indigenous to the Americas. And it's also the Egyptian god Horus. Man, I don't know what the, I don't know. I don't know what you need to what else you need to see. <laughs> I don't know what else you need to see. You feel me? Shout out to Cali, man. I don't know what else you need to see. Just like this, just like this other bird that's right here. Hold up. You talking about this other bird that's right here? Hold up. You talking, you talking, you talking about this other bird? Hold up. So you talking about this other bird, right? You talking about this one? So you got that one. You got that one. That one. You talking about so you so you talking about this bird right here. Ah, I just want to make sure that you talking about the same bird that I'm talking about, right? From the same book. You talking about this bird right here then, right? Huh? The Plumbios Ibis? What's that about? It's, uh, it's formerly called the Blue Ibis. It's a large, distinctive Ibis species endemic to parts of South, to Central South America. Mmm. Evansville, Indiana, Islam. Oh, you saying, you saying what now? Hold up, man. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up, <laughs> hold up Morris. Is you saying what I think you're saying? You trying to tell me that there's another connection with Ibis? So hold up. So you got Anubis, you got Ibis, and you got the ancient god Horus, the Aplomato Falcon. All of these animals are indigenous to the Americas. And they also written on the pyramids. Oh man, what you? I don't. I don't know what you need to see, man. I don't know what you need to see, huh? I don't know what you need to see. What else you need to see? You need to see some more receipts, okay? Yeah, you need to see some more receipts. Uh huh. Okay. See this? This right here. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one. And as you see, this is an Olmec head. The phenotype is undoubtedly that of a moor, and the headdress resembles a fez. Fez. Ancient and modern national headdress of the moor by moors. Uh, this is what we talking about. Ancient and modern. Ancient and modern. Hold up. Ancient and modern. Oh, we cooking. Oh, we cooking. We cooking. And keep in mind what the prophet Noble Drali said. Keep in mind what he said now. Don't lose sight of what he said now. Huh? Huh? Don't, 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 don't lose it now. Hold up. 
Don't lose sight of what the prophet Noble Drawley said when he said these words right here. He said, what your ancient forefathers were, you are today without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who is able to change man from the descendant nature of his forefathers unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator, Allah himself. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we own that. We own that. We own that. Come on, Morris. Pyramids, triangular, triangular. Step pyramids, which are flat. Mortar boards, which are flat. Huh? You got all these pyramids that's in the Americas. That's right. In the Americas, fam. In the Americas. We talking about dynamic pyramid complexes all through the Americas. Even over there in Giza. China and the Americas? What? How could how could that be? How could that be if we ain't the same people? Huh? I mean, how 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 could that be? How how could that be? How how could that be if we ain't the same people now? Huh? Talk to me. Talk to me. Ooh. Talk to me. What's up? What's up? I'm just going to crush him with pictures now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Just crush him with pictures now. This us. This us right here. Huh? This us. Ain't no, ain't no going back. See, once you see, you can't unsee. You can't never unsee once you see it, Morris. Look, this is why they wanted to get us on some. Nah, y'all are y'all are native people. Native? Like what you what you what are you talking about native? You know what native mean? You know what native mean? See, that's why you got we gotta dig back into etymology. Look. What etymology say? It say native from early 15th century. It means as born in a particular place of indigenous origin or growth, not exotic or foreign. Also of or pertaining to one by birth as in native land. But it gets worse. Mid century person born. Hold up. Watch this. Mid 15th century. Person born in bondage. One born a serf or villain. Old French, naive, which also meant, quote, woman born in slavery. We talking about this is what native means. So you want to be a native? Or you want to be indigenous? There's a difference. So. From 1530s, one born in a certain place or country applied from 1600s to original inhabitants of non-European nations where Europeans hold political power. For example, American Indians. You don't want to be a Native American because that means slavery. That's a slave term. That means you were born in slavery. A person in bondage. One born a serf or villain. You still want to be a Native American? You want to be an American Indian? Also used from early 15th century in a now obsolete sense of, quote, bound. Born in servitude or serfdom. You want to be a Native American? You want to be an American Indian? So if you don't want to do that... Then you got to come back home to what you is. You got to come back over here. 
Huh? You got to come back over here where you supposed to be at, more. You got to come back here. When you start seeing this, the rights of indigenous people. Ah, you got to come back here. If you want to be recognized, you got to come back to your Moorish nationality. You got to come, you got to come back over there. You got to come back to common law, divine law, natural law, just good them, international law, exercise of substantive rights, treaty rights, universal declaration of human rights, United Nations declaration on the rights of indigenous people, Vienna convention on the law of treaties done at Vienna on May 23rd, 1969. Supreme Court case decisions, acts of state, acts of Congress. You got to come back over here to divinity. See, this is a memorandum of laws. You got to come back over here because if you sticking over there with that Native American bullshit, you sticking over there with that American Indian bullshit, you going to be signing yourself up to being born in servitude or serfdom. Indians. You thought that was an escape route? Nah, horns go off. Horns going off. Huh? Them horns go off. You gotta come back home. You gotta come back home, boys. You gotta come back home. If you don't come back home, you sign yourself up for that. Article 3 is for the salvation of Moorish people. See that? See that? Indigenous peoples have the right to self-determination. You got to come back here. See, by virtue of the right to they freely determine their political status. That's your nationality. You, you have the right to determine your political status. Latino is a slave status. Indian is a slave status. Hispanic is a slave status. See, our political status in law that's correct is more American, more, and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. We supposed to be over here, protected. But you ain't got no protection with a misnomer. You ain't got no protection over there. Now, you come back home to your birthright, your nationality, your inheritance. Now you good. Now you can start having political protection, exercising law, not throwing your opinions around. That ain't going to help you. What the law say? Oh, yeah. Let me show y'all something real quick. Now, I want to show y'all something real quick. Look at this. I'm going to show y'all something fast. We've been moving around. Now, y'all remember this right here, right? Y'all remember this? Remember this right here? Y'all know, everybody know this song, right? You know this song, right? What's your status in their system? Their system is de facto, more. The U.S. corporation is de facto. We not a part of their system. That's the part. That's the part. That's the part about nationality and birthright. Recognizing yourself as a Moorish American. You're not involved in their system. The thing is, to get out of their system, you got to first nationalize. That start up here, not paperwork. Get out of their system up here first. It ain't about filling out no piece of paper. It's up here. As a Moorish American, you're not a part of the de facto U.S. corporation. Because the U.S. corporation can only have citizens which are corporations, artificial. Now, when you nationalize in your mind and your heart, now you out of that system, you've escaped their de facto matrix. It's all artificial. You hear that music? You hear that song right there, right? Now watch this. When you come over here and you say, right here. See this right here? Hold up. I'm a rule plus can. America, um, um, look. I'm a rule can, people of the land of the serpent, right? Transmigration of species across continents could only occurred, could have only occurred if the lands were connected, which they was all connected. So Amaru Khan is the people of the land of the serpent. 
So you ain't got to be afraid no more of these serpents or these dragons because that's us. See that? You ain't got to be afraid of these no more because this is also a representation of who we are. Look, this is also a representation of this right here. This right here is also a representation. You see? See that? It's a representation. See the serpents going up the pine going up to the pineal gland through the spinal column is a representation of the ascension to the 33rd degree, which is the Christ degree. That's just the vertebrae. But our degrees go higher. We exceed 33 degrees. We exceed those, those degrees to 360 degrees. Or 720 degrees, depending on what level you own. It's up to you what level you want to be on. See? So that's why they're saying the serpent. Because the land was connected, it formed the shape of a serpent. That's where that came from. I'm a Rukan. Nah, you hear this song, right? Okay, watch this. Watch this. Show you how we connect in the real time. Now, remember that song? Listen to this. You see that? We all connected. We all are connected. So when you see the pyramids over here, on this side of the world, you see them over here, and then you see them over here on this side of the world. Keep in mind, they're all the same. We're all the same people. So when they say so-called Puerto Ricans and, and so-called Haitians and so-called anybody from the islands, when they be like, y'all not Americans, y'all ain't had nothing to do with hip hop. That's not true at all. We are all Moorish. See, the, the link is the name Moorish American. That's the link up. The link up is in the name Moorish American. So hip hop is all of our culture. It don't matter who started it. It's all of our culture because we all one people, one nation. You see that? So whether you're from the DR, PR, IET, Zameka, Cuba, whether you're from any one of these islands that's over here, Trinidad, anywhere over here, the Bahamas, Barbados, Guyana, Grenada, St. Lucia, anywhere over here. Anywhere you are Moorish American, the name is the link up. Mexicans are Moorish Americans. That's who they are. Moorish Americans, fam. Central Americans are Moorish Americans. Belize, Honduras, Ecuador, all that over here. Nicaragua. Have you looked at the flags that's over here? The flags that's over there in Nicaragua. In IET, they got a fez on them. Huh? They got a fez on them. So you think, oh, okay, you need you need you need a receipt then. You you need you need a receipt real quick for, for this time to go off. You need a receipt then. Nicaragua. Didn't I just say they had a fez on them? What's that right there? That's a fez inside the flag of Nicaragua. Inside of a pyramid. Here's another fez on top of the coat of arms in Cuba. There's another fez on the coat of arms with the key on there. Here's another fez on top of the coat of arms of Ayati. Right there. It's called the Liberty Cap. You see the connection? Here's El Salvador with a fez inside that pyramid. Bing bong. And there's the timer. So I got to move around, boys. I hope y'all got something this beam out. Much love. It went by too fast. But it's always love, though. It's always love. I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Each one teach one. Teach and study. 
Get a knowledge to your babies, fam. Teach and study and spread it on. All right? I'm going to catch y'all on the next one, though. Appreciate y'all. Much love. Peace, Morris.